والتفت الساق بالساق يكون حسن البصري اي ما with his dogs and he returned to his palace and he was so thirsty he was so thirsty he was calling I need some water I need some drink and there was a scholar a learned man who used to be close to the king so he said to the servant when he was bringing the water he said to the servant give me the give me the water because I want to give this water to the king myself personally. So he went to the king and the king was so thirsty, he said, give me the water, give me the water. And the scholar said, look, he said, no. He said, first I want to ask you a question. How much of your kingdom would you give up for this glass of water? If this was the only glass of water you could give, how much of your kingdom would you relinquish for a glass of water? He said, I would give half my kingdom to drink water. I would give half my kingdom. So the scholar, he gave him the water. So the king drank the water. He said, thank God. He said, I needed that drink of water. Then after a while, the scholar waited. And he could see this king felt the need to relieve himself. So the king was getting up and the scholar said, sit down, sit down. First, before you go, I have to ask you. Imagine you're not able to relieve yourself. Imagine you're not able to go to the bathroom. Imagine you are not able to urinate. How much would you pay for the ability to urinate when you're desperate? How much of your kingdom would you give for that? He said, I'd give half my kingdom. He said, oh my king. Your whole kingdom is worth a glass of water and urinating a glass of water. Your whole kingdom is worth, and this is it my people, think about it. In the Quran, listen to these words, please listen. In the Quran, let me recite to you some Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Al-Hakam al-Takathur. Hatta zultam al-Maqabir. Halla sofa ta'alamun. ثم قل سوف تعلمون قل لو تعلمون علم اليكين لترؤن الجحيم ثم لترؤنها عين اليقين ثم لتسلون يومئذ عين النعيم Let me translate that for you. الحاكم التكاثر God is saying the worldly life distracts you. That is the reality, people. You are distracted by your life. How fun is your life? The sun is shining. I'm riding my bike. I'm drinking my Coke. It's the real thing. I'm having such a good time. You know what? Your life distracts you. The dunya, the world, it distracts you. Until you reach the grave. Yes, the grave. Death. The death is the thing that we don't think about. Death is the thing we want to forget it. Death is the thing we don't want to hear about death. Don't talk to me. We don't even call it death. We call it kicking the can. He passed away. He passed away. He, he, he left us. No death, people. Death is the reality. That is one thing you can be sure about. You want to know something that you can be sure about? You want some surety? Death. Death is going to come to me. It's going to come to you. You can be rich. You can be poor. You can be a ruler of a land with $70 billion in your bank account. And death is going to come to you. You can be, you can be Obama or you can be the man who empties the din. Bin, death is going to come to you. Man, woman, children, the young, the old, the poor, the weak, the needy. Death is the equalizer. It is going to come and take every single one of you. And what have you prepared? What have you prepared for death? Do you even know what is going to happen when you die? Oh, I'll find out when I get there. But listen, people, <laughs> by every account, 
by every account, whether you're a Hindu, whether you're a Buddhist, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a Jew, whether you're a Muslim, every account of death tells us that when you die, it's too late. You have to decide now. It's what you do in this life that is going to determine what happens to you when you die. The only people who say something different are the atheists. They say there is no God. This whole universe is a random event. A random event. A wreck. If I told you this bottle randomly, spontaneously appears, you'd say I was crazy. And this is simple. A bottle is a simple thing of water. How about this universe in which we live? How about this? How about us, our bodies? Are we simple? My mobile phone. You know what this mobile phone is made of? Glass comes from sand. Plastic comes from oil. And you know where this? You know where I found this mobile phone? I was walking around in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, plenty of oil and sand, and I picked it up, a product of billions of years of random events. <laughs> the oil bubbled, the wind blew, the sun, the sun shone, the lightning struck, and after billions of years of random events, this mobile phone formed itself by random processes, and I put, oh, mom, hi! <laughs> You know what? Atheists think they're rational? Rational? What is rational about believing that a highly complex universe, it is so complex that we don't even have a model that describes the accurate working of the atom. We have to describe it through a highly complex mathematical equation. If I showed it to most of you, you'd say, what is that? But it's a random event. It doesn't make sense, my people. That's nonsense. None of you would believe that about anything. So let's just put atheism to a side because it's a fantasy. But anyone else who has some spiritual insight will tell you death. Death, it's too late. Once you're dead, it's too late. So Allah says in the Quran, al mutakafir the worldly life distracts you until you reach the graves. Then you will come to know. Then you're going to know. Then definitely you'll come to know. What are you going to know when you're dead? Jesus is what are you going to know when you're Jesus dead? Is our Lord. What are you going to realize when you're dead? You know what you're going to realize, people? Allah says, Al Jahim. You know what Al Jahim is? It is the fire of hell. Yes, I, I'm sorry I said it. Hellfire. And I don't apologize that I'm here to warn you of a day. A day when the sun will be brought close. A day when we will sweat. A day when mankind will be in terror. When they will be in fear. When we will be running like we are in a drunken riot. But we will not be drunk. We will not be drunk with alcohol. It is the fear that will make us run. Because this is the day that we denied. This is the day we ignored. This is the day we forgot. It is the day of judgment. The day when our Lord, our Creator, your Lord and my Lord will ask us about every single thing that we have done. Every atom's weight of good and every atom's weight of evil will be asked about it. And Jesus Christ Everything is our people, Lord and Judge. Our Lord will ask us on that day, what did you do? What did you believe? Why did you believe it? What did you do with this gift? I told you and I began, my people, I began by telling you a story. A story of a king who was ready to give his kingdom for a glass of water. In order to drink water, he said, I'd give half my kingdom. In order to urinate it, he would give the other half the kingdom. And what have we done with our lives, people? What have we done with our lives? What have we achieved? What significance have we achieved? What have we done? There's this singer. What was her name? This singer that died. Amy Winehouse. Huh? Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. What name is that? Winehouse. <laughs> but you know what? I'm sorry. I feel saddened by the death of anybody. But what a name, Winehouse. You know what, I'm listening about the death of this girl who killed herself. Really, she killed herself through her drug addiction. But at the same time, I'm listening on the news and I'm hearing stories of a woman in Somalia who walked 30 days. 30 days she walked with her family to live, to live. 
And we, in this society, we have everything and we throw it away to take drugs and kill ourselves. What is that? We are insane. Who are we to tell the world how we should live? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. What do we have to offer? Coca-Cola? Cars? Pollution? Depression? Drugs? What have we got really in this Western society? Consumerism. The consumer society that is killing our planet. We really want the world to live the American dream? There isn't enough of the world for everyone to live the American dream. Don't you know that? They calculated that every, every human being on this planet lived how the average American lived. We would need the resources of three planets to sustain human life. If every human being... That is because 17% of the world's population consumes 70% of its resources. 40% of the world's wealth is in the hands of about 450 human beings. Think about that. Think about that. Think about who controls the information that comes to your head. Think about who controls the information that you receive on the TV. Who controls it? Who feeds your mind? Really? Are you thinking, people? Do you sit and think about your life? Do you think where you came from and where you're going to? Do you think about death? Have you prepared for that journey? You know, my people, any one of you will go on a holiday. You know what you'd do if you went to a strange land? You'd prepare. You'd get a visa. You'd get the currency. You'd learn about the diseases in that land. You'd prepare yourself. What have you prepared for death? What have you prepared for the day when you will meet your Lord and your Creator and you will stand in front of Him naked, no clothes? You know, you can't take it with you when you go, people.